Lyle told me the clock is right and we're already past due for me to introduce Sharon Bracken, who is going to tell us a whole bunch of stuff right now. So let's listen to Sharon. Thank you, Caitlin. Is Mike, is Christopher? Music is really nice to come into the sanctuary with, isn't it? Should we test this? Is, is this working now? No? Should I just be loud? Hello? Okay? All right. Um, before I do anything, I want to tell you on your bulletin that uh, it was... Uh, there will be a hymn called the bread of the world after the sermon it is not in your bulletin but it will be on the screen and we also have um music on the screen notes on the screen with our uh words now christopher found a site that will do that for us so george you should be happy with that <laughs> okay being a music background he really likes to see the notes um i I would like to introduce our speaker for the day. We're privileged to have as our speaker, Reverend Brian Morris. Brian was born and raised in Independence, Missouri. His dad lives at Foxwood Springs, which many of you may know is our um, regional uh, adult living facility. And he says he's an animal lover. On the board, you'll see that he's an ordained minister in the Christian Church Disciples of Christ. He maintains standing in the greater Kansas City region. He's director of chaplain services at Lakewood Medical Center, University Health. He's a board certified chaplain. He's a member and elder of our Eastgate Christian Church in Independence. And he went to UMKC in Arts and Science Bachelor of Arts. He has a Master of Science in Social Gerontology from Central Missouri and he has his Master of Divinity from the Christian Theological Seminary in Indianapolis, Tennessee, and he, or Indiana, and he's also going to give us a special music. So we're very privileged to have you today, Brian. Thank you for being here. The other thing I want to um, discuss is World Communion Sunday. Every year on the first Sunday in October, Christians around the globe celebrate World Communion Sunday. It is a day to remember that Jesus Christ is the head of the church and that every Christian church and any denomination that promotes Christian, Christian unity are one. As you are aware, our Christian church, Disciples of Christ, observe communion every Sunday. However, many denominations participate in communion quarterly or less often. So today, as we experience the taking of bread and juice, be mindful that it is being observed all over the world by God's people. From Psalm 67, 5, may the peoples praise you, God. May all the peoples praise you. And now we'll listen to Kevin. too many papers here. Um, Lyle's going to show a video that Christopher obtained from our president of the Disciples of Christ. Hello, disciples. I come to you today asking for your prayers and for your support. First, for our siblings in Puerto Rico who have recently been devastated by Hurricane Fiona. All power was lost to the island when Fiona first hit, and we have been in touch with their general pastor, Pastora Hilda Robles. We know that congregational buildings were damaged, that family members uh, had damage to their homes. We know that the entire island lost power. We Give Compassion staff have been in touch to provide immediate assistance funds and to help those congregations navigate the complex web of federal agencies to ensure that support is given where support is needed. The pension fund has sent money from the ministerial relief fund 
to provide clergy salary support. We'll continue to keep you posted on the situation in Puerto Rico as we continue to communicate with our sibling churches there. And even as I'm recording tonight, we know that Florida is being devastated by landfall from Hurricane Ian. And as it moves across the state of Florida, we know that homes will be devastated, church buildings, the devastation of storm surge from this Category 4 hurricane that is over 200 miles wide. I urge you to consider making a gift to Week of Compassion. As I always say, when Week of Compassion is there, the whole church is there. And Week of Compassion has the ability to leverage those dollars to work with other ministry partners. You can also make a gift to the Pension Fund Ministerial Relief Fund to provide clergy salary support. And when the time is right for us to send um, mission teams to assist in rebuilding and repair, we'll let you know. But for right now, we need your prayers and we need your financial support to be there uh, for our friends and our siblings. Psalm 46 tells us that God is a re our refuge and strength, a very present help in time of trouble. And so we will not fear, though the earth would change, the mountains crumble into the sea and the sea roar. It's hard to imagine not being afraid in the midst of such devastation. But we know that God is with us. And we know that God has blessed us to be a help and support to those who need it. You responded so well to supporting our friends and our siblings in Jackson, Mississippi during their recent water crisis, which is not over. But remember, your gift to Week of Compassion helps the church to be there when we can. God bless you, saints. Pray for our friends. Pray and send your financial gifts to Week of Compassion and the Ministerial Relief Fund of the Pension Fund. God bless you, and remember that God loves you, and so do I. Good morning. morning. Welcome, Chaplain Brian. I noticed on the screen you have a Master's of Science in Gerontology. You should be very comfortable here today. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> um, for announcements, well, greetings. We greet anyone that's on the internet watching today. Uh, announcements. I know Julie Scott has an announcement. No. This, this Julie right here. Of course. Hello? Okay, first of all, I have the sign-up sheet for the prayer vigil on um, October 19th, and we're going to do it in the John um, Walker Chapel, and so if people will just sign up for a slot, uh, more than one person can sign up for a slot. Also, if you um, can't come to the church or you're not in town, I put a little column that you can, you know, pray, pray from home or wherever you are. So you can still put your name in a slot. And then the next thing I was going to announce is this. Um, I'll be like Vanna White. This lovely display here that um, Julie, Scott, uh, Julie Rausch did all beautifully is um, it's, we're, we're celebrating the church's birthday this month. And so um, this is going to be a birthday blessing to the church. So we put a bunch of stickers on here with dollar amounts to support um, snow removal, cleaning supplies, postage, just a bunch of different gifts. You know, we've had a lot of unexpected expenses um, this year, and so these gifts will help bring the budget back into balance. I also put out front um, a display of like total cost, like electric bill for 2021 was 8,000 and some dollars just for electricity for the church. So there's a list there for you to see. So if you just pull one off, and um, there's on the cross, we're going to stick them on the cross when we get the money for them. Uh, don't hesitate to take more than one. Take as many as you like. We have a couple on there that say, just because I love the church, 
you can pull that one off. And does anyone want to try this this morning? Oh, Gayla, come up. <laughs> You're the next contestant on Bless the Church. I have a, a certain amount that I put on my check today, so excuse me, I have to do some math. That's hard on a Sunday morning, but um, let's we'll see. I like this one. Water and sewer. Okay. Um, I use a lot of paper here, so some copy paper. And... Um, Oh, oh, okay. I said I chose water and sewer and copy paper because I use a lot of paper and I go to the bathroom a lot. Um, maybe gas bill. Not because I'm gassy or anything. <laughs> and so, sorry. Um, Once I just oh, love the church. Love the church. Okay. It's $100. Is that okay? No. <laughs> we don't have any that high. So anyway, um, it'll be out front. Um, if you guys have any questions, just ask us. And, you know, it's just a fun way for us to celebrate the church that we love. Thank you. Thanks for setting a good example there. Awesome. If there's no other announcements... Let's get begin to praise the Lord. We're going to start with our prelude. Good morning, everyone. 
I forgot my manners this morning. We do have some visitors. Margaret Wolf's got some family down from Minnesota. Hi, Minnesotans. I want to wish a happy birthday to Johnny Walker and Carol Geary. Okay, now my official duties are done. Let me get down to business. I'm sorry. Yeah, see, I'm so distracted. Welcome to y'all. Oh, I know that's their daughter. Yes. So, and nice to see you, man. Three three different people in the church just confuses us at one time. I would like to be really confused in the future because we need a whole bunch more. Thank you for coming today. All right. <laughs> So I blinked, and September was gone. Bam. It's October. You know, I like to read, and I have several favorite authors, but the more I read, the older and I hope wiser I'm getting is, I think my favorite author is, is Paul. Of course, now, he's really just the scribe because it's God giving Paul the, the stuff to write down. Because what was written then is as true now as forever. Now, Pastor Bill has talked every week about us coming together to pray about the future of First Christian Church. And in the mail, uh, I, I'm sure most of us, at least I received this green letter along with the giving letter from Mr. Manahan. But this was from Julie Scott with specific dates for us to pray and gather together to pray for the church. And uh, at the bottom of it, Julie quoted an Old Testament scripture, Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. It says, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways your ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my ways, my thoughts, are higher than your thoughts. And in the New Testament, Paul is writing to the Philippians about the love of Christ and God, and we all need to follow these words as we move forward as a church. From Philippians 2, 2 to 5, make my joy complete by being like-minded having the same love and being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should not only look to your own interests, but also the interests of the others, and I'm adding this word, interests of the church. Your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we pray that your plan for this church becomes clear. We pray that we are doing the right things to show others Jesus' love for everyone. We pray for clarity and discernment to know it is your plan for us and we pray for the strength and leadership to follow this plan. This prayer is asked through your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand and join us as we sing our opening songs. Our very first song we're going to sing, O God of All Creation, um, is written by one of my favorite modern hymn writers, Carolyn Gillette, and she wrote it at the beginning of this week right as the storms were um, getting ready to hit Florida, and it speaks about the, the devastation and the need for, for prayer, for, for flooding, and um, healing of folks in those devastated areas.
I told Brian I'd help with joys and concerns since he doesn't know us as well, hopefully, or as well as hopefully I do. I did want to draw attention. On the back of the bulletin, it says, for the love of music, we are doing some rearranging of the pianos in the church. And I just wanted to tell you, if you don't know, the piano that Christopher is using is his personal piano that he has loaned to us. We had it moved here from the Overland Park Church. And um, the one that was here is now in the basement. We now have a piano in the chapel and we have a piano in Christopher's office. And all of those had to be moved and all of those had to be tuned. And they were tuned Friday. Um, and Christopher has done a great job arranging for all of this. So um, I do know that the tuning costs $460 for all of them. So if you have a little uh, love in your heart for music, you might add a little bit to the offering plate for that move. Um, also, as far as the music today, Christopher's done a wonderful job, I think, of, um, attending to the present situation in Florida and Puerto Rico and the islands and for World Communion Sunday. Thank you, Christopher. Now, for joys and concerns, should we go with joys first? Anyone have a joy? Julie. Uh, my daughter, Laura, has been looking for a new job. And she started last week with the job she really, really wanted. She was a nurse. Okay. Julie has a joy. Laura got, her daughter got a job that she really wanted. And uh, I think she really likes it so far. Julie's been down taking care of the kids for a little bit. So we're thankful for that. Any other joys? Ju uh, J Carolyn, I'm sorry. So Carolyn has birthdays for granddaughters. Yes, and Carol's birthday is today. And Johnny's is tomorrow? Today too? Oh, okay. Carol's is tomorrow. Johnny's is today. Happy birthday. Should we sing happy birthday? Christopher, where are you? <laughs> happy birthday to you. We won't ask how many years. Any other joys? And we're so happy to have visitors today. One from Minnesota, so that's extra special. Heather and David are from Oregon, right? Washington, Oregon? OK. The other Washington. <laughs> All right. Okay, concerns. Sheila's given me permission to share that she's going to have knee surgery on Tuesday. It's a total knee replacement, and that's why Heather and David are here to help her out. Alan, why did I say David? I'm sorry. Oh, that's the other one. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the correction. Um, any other concerns? John.
Okay. Betty Donovan's um, having terrible pain that she's trying to control. Her daughter Carmen is helping her out. Carmen's husband also has very large health issues. And so we need to keep the Donovan, Betty Donovan, her daughter, and her husband in prayer. And John also mentioned that Jeff is traveling back from uh, wheelchair um, tennis. It used to be basketball, but now it's tennis. So that's what he was saying. Any other concerns? Carolyn. Oh. Okay. Carolyn said that Ernie, her husband, fell again yesterday. He's been having some mobility issues. And what I ask you to do is keep these prayers from our congregation in your personal prayers. And Brian is going to go and continue with um, our prayer in the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Lord God, we come to adore you. You are the very ground of all that is. You hold us in being, and without you we could not be. Before we were born, before time began, before the universe came into being, you were. When time is finished, when the universe is no more, you will still be. Nothing can take your power from you. We give you thanks for this life and all its blessings, for joys great and simple, for the love at the heart of your purpose and a surpassing wisdom in all your works, we express our deep gratitude and thanksgiving. We take a moment to pray for the people, animals, and property who faced the ravage of Hurricane Ian this past week and are still struggling. We pray that you have mercy on all involved, provide for all needs, physical as well as spiritual and emotional. We lift up the people who are helping in this time, those who work to restore power, those who rescue people and animals in distress, those who provide finances, labor, and prayer. And we take a moment to reflect and celebrate the beauty that is World Communion Sunday. World Communion Sunday that exposes the folly of Christian nationalism and any self-absorbed or small ways of thinking. For we are one with all followers of Christ together. We are a light to the world. As Paul says, we are one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Through this world, though this world often feels confusing and sad, we trust in you. Though our lives are filled with uncertainty and anxiety, we trust in you. You are the rock and salvation. With trembling knees and feeble hands, we trust in you to see us through all the way into the promised land. For this and so many more things, 
We thank you and we praise your holy name. And it is in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. And now uh, let us join as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins. We forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, the glory forever. It's time for the special song. Just one second here. <clears throat> I tuned it, but I'll make sure it's tuned again so it doesn't sound weird. I'm really uh, privileged to be here with you. And I love that we sang happy birthday for two reasons. One, it was good for the people here whose birthday is today and tomorrow. But you know what? My birthday is Tuesday, so that's kind of cool. <laughs> okay. And I appreciate the opportunity to pray and preach, but also to, to sing a song that I think is just one of the prettiest, prettiest traditional songs. Be Thou My Vision. Oh, uh -huh. 
by day or by night, waking or sleeping, thy presence I light. Be thou my wisdom and thou my true word, I ever with thee and thou with me, Lord. Thou my great Father, I thy true Son, thou in me dwelling and I with thee one. Riches I heed not, nor vain mortal praise. Thou mine inheritance, now and always. Thou and the only, first in my heart. High King of heaven, my treasure thou art. My King of Heaven, my victory won. May I reach Heaven's joy, O bright Heaven's sun. Heart of my own heart, whatever be before, still be my vision, O I've triple checked. I'm just going to make sure the ringer's off. Yep, there we go. Okay. We're going to read from the Gospel of St. Luke in the 14th chapter. And I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version, and it's the updated edition, uh, which just came out this year. <coughs> Here it is. Now, um, here we go. On one occasion, when Jesus was going to the house of a leader of the Pharisees to eat a meal on the Sabbath, they were watching him closely. When he noticed how the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. Jesus said, when you are invited by someone to a wedding banquet, do not sit at the place of honor in case someone more distinguished than you has been invited by your host. And the host who invited both of you may come and say to you, give this person your place. And then in disgrace, you would start to take the lowest place. But... When you are invited, go and sit down at the lowest place so that when your host comes, he may say to you, friend, move up higher. Then you will be honored in the presence of all who sit at the table with you. For all who exalt themselves will be humbled and those who humble themselves will be exalted. Jesus said also to the one who had invited him, When you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends or your brothers and sisters or your relatives or rich neighbors in case they may invite you in return and you would be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame and the blind. And you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. For you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. That's our reading. It starts out 
with a, an invitation for Jesus to join a religious leader, one of the most powerful religious leaders, we would assume, in their community. Uh, they say Pharisee here. And I always like to take a moment to remind us in the, in the Gospels, the Pharisees are presented as the bad guys. But we need to be aware of something that had we lived at that time and in that culture, we would have known that the Pharisees were, were actually good guys. They were, they were generally pretty progressive in helping people to live the Jewish life. But since they were kind of similar to Jesus in a lot of ways, and they were, there were certain Pharisees that were always picking on him. And so, you know, Jesus, when he talks about Pharisees and the Sadducees and all, he's not talking about them just in a blank way. Uh, but so basically, they're not going to be the ones that get the attention. So he's li they're lifting up the ones who are the problem. Uh, so that's what's going on. It's kind of like how you'd say, you know, the governors or the, the bishops or something today. It doesn't mean all of them. And I just want to be careful with that because of the, you know, the, the past century with the anti-Jewish stuff that happened, you know, especially in Germany. We need to be mindful of how we talk about our Jewish uh, siblings or elders, really. So now they're at this meal. And when Jesus noticed that the guests chose the places of honor, he told them a parable. He says, when someone invites you to a wedding banquet. Now, you know, Jesus in the Bible, he says, we're going to be invited to a wedding banquet. He, he uses the, uh, the big banquet, the, the kingdom of God, if you will, the banquet, when we're, when we're gathered up with it. We do it here. We symbolize it here every week in a disciple's church. But he talks about it, the, the, you know, he's the bridegroom, we the church are the bride. It's a big wedding banquet. That's the metaphor that Jesus uses throughout the scriptures. So he's talking, when you're invited to a wedding banquet, he says, don't go up to the highest place and, and, get, and get embarrassed. He's uh, kind of working with Proverbs 25 that says, do not put yourself forward in the king's presence or stand in the place of the great. For it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of a noble. To understand how this is working, the, the ancient, this culture, when they had a dinner, a big dinner, it was like in a horseshoe shape, you know? And they didn't have chairs. You, you might already know this, but for those who don't know, the tables would have been pretty small and low to the ground, and, and you would recline with pillows you would recline on your left side, and your right hand you'd use for food. It was, it was understood, and you'd, like, I'd be here, and the person after me would be, like, back here, right? And it was understood that the person, again, thinking like a horseshoe here, the, the, the host would be at the front of the horseshoe, and the guest of honor would be at the right-hand side. You might remember in the scriptures, Jesus sits at the right hand of God the Father. This all ties in. But this is all, this was, it makes more sense when we understand the cultural, that's how, they would have understood it intuitively. They just knew it. So, you, and then you go down and it's, it, we're not that much different today. We are so petty and vain sometimes. You know, that we, we saw who's on top, who's the most popular. Who, and then finally the, the poor people at the end, they're the ones, yeah, I guess I'm the one stuck at the end, you know. But so that's how that was. And so that's how, that was the context when he said he noticed people going up to the highest seats available. And he, he, he played, if you will, I think he was playing up to their own vanity. He recognizes the human condition. And he says, now, look at this. If you go up there and then the host brings in someone who sits, wants to sit up higher, that's going to be humiliating. And no one likes to be humiliated, to be shamed in public. So he says, sit down low, <laughs> and, then, and then the host will bring you up higher, and you'll feel real good about it. So that's a very practical teaching. But he also says, or Jesus, there's always a spiritual meaning too, right? There's always a deeper spiritual meaning. He says, all who exalt themselves will be humbled, and those who humble themselves will be exalted. 
Now you find this imagery throughout the Bible, and Jesus, boy, he talks about it a lot. Uh, the theological language for it is the great reversal. The last will be first, the first will be last. You know, Jesus, Jesus promises us that in the, the world to come, in, in God's kingdom, it will be very topsy-turvy. Uh, the Queen of England, you know, recently passed away, and the whole world was fixated on it. I was too. Shall we? I, I, I know not everyone does, but I thought she was a, a very good, noble woman and queen. But, um, but in heaven, and I guarantee you she's perfectly happy with this, <laughs> in heaven, she's no big special deal. She's not the Queen of England in heaven. She, she's Liz. <laughs> and she's perfectly happy being Liz. It's a great reversal. It's not anti-people on top. It's just showing that it changes. It's changing. Well, he's helping us to see how God sees things, who we know from Scripture is not a respecter of persons. doesn't matter if you're born in a palace or if you're born under a bridge. Now, there's a story that kind of illustrates this. Uh, there was a famous writer back in the mid-20th century called C.S. Lewis. He wrote a really neat short little book. It's a fiction book, but with fiction, he was able to, to examine uh, the afterlife and kind of play with it. So it's not dogmatic, and so people wouldn't get all upset. It was fiction. But, um, and I'm not going to get into all the details, but I'll give you just this one illustration. Uh, the 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 star, if you will, is being given a, a tour of heaven. And the, the tour guide is with him, and he, he says, oh, look, here comes, here comes one of the biggest uh, celebrities, if you will, of heaven. And yes, lo and behold, there's this woman, and she's being carried up, hoisted up high, like you see in those Cleopatra movies, right? Hoisted up high, angels blowing trumpets all over the place. This woman's a big deal. One of the most important people in heaven. And the, the, our friend, we'll say C.S. Lewis, he goes, well, well who's that? That's, that has to be the Virgin Mary, right? He goes, no. No, that's Sarah Smith. <laughs> Sarah Smith? I never heard of Sarah Smith. She wasn't very famous on earth. She was just a regular person. But she loved deeply. And when people were in her presence, they felt loved not in a manipulative way or like someone's trying to, in a phony way. They felt loved in such a way that they felt more truly themselves than they did before they saw her that day. She loved children. She loved animals. She loved elders. Well, heck, if she met you, she loved you. And that's why in heaven, even though on earth she was just Sarah Smith, in heaven, she's a big, big deal. Well, so he gives that lesson of the great reversal and not exalting ourselves. But then he transitions. And if you'll excuse me a second, I've got a dry mouth here. He shifts gears into another story. He turns to the one who invited him. And he said, when you give a luncheon or a dinner, do not invite your friends, your brothers and sisters, your relatives, rich neighbors, uh, or th those who might, uh, those in, who in case will re invite you in, in return and you'll be repaid. But when you give a banquet, invite the poor, the crippled, the lame, and the blind, and you will be blessed because they cannot repay you. And you will be repaid at the resurrection of the righteous. It's just like the great reversal. There's a promise. There's a promise. And I know not everyone believes in, in everlasting life, but, but I do. And um, you'll be repaid. All the good we do makes a difference. But you know what? Even if there wasn't an afterlife, and hear me out, I think there is. You know, But even if there wasn't, wouldn't our life be a lot richer if we just lifted other people up? I think it would. I think it would. Now, I want to be clear about something. He says here, 
as a device, a rhetorical device. Don't invite your friends and families. We know from reading other places in the Bible where Jesus ate with friends and family. He doesn't mean like literally never have dinner with your friends and family. He doesn't mean that. He's making a, a point, a spiritual point. Of course he wants you to have dinner with your family and to have dinner with your friends and your neighbors. My goodness, Jesus had dinner with his friends all the time. That he's making the point, do something good. Feed those who can't do anything for you. And in their society, it was the blind, the poor, the crippled, the widow. You know, we have different people in our society, but we have people in the same way. And there's a nice little story that I'll tell. Some of you may know it, but bear with me. If It's a story, true story, told by a famous preacher named Tony Campolo. Tony Campolo, he so famous that he travels around and gives lectures and sermons and I've heard him, I've been blessed to hear him preach he's a powerful preacher and he's funny too but he was once on, he was once in Hawaii and it was his first night there and you know the time change had him all thrown off with jet lag and he, he couldn't sleep so he gets up about 2.30 in the morning starts walking around looking for a place to maybe grab a bite and he sees, he sees a diner so he got with the lights on. So he goes in, and it's a, it's a greasy spoon all the way. And he orders a cup of coffee and a donut, and he's just sitting there observing the people. About 3 o'clock in the morning, in walk a whole big group of, well, let's just say it, prostitutes. And it was obvious these were prostitutes. And they sat down, and he's getting uncomfortable. The language is coarse. They're smoking cigarettes around him. He, he was like thinking, I gotta get out of here. But he overheard a conversation right next to him. Right next to him. There was a lady who said to her friend, tomorrow's my 30th birthday. And her friend said, well, what do you want me to do about it? Throw you a party? And the lady said, you don't have to be mean. I just..." I don't expect anything. No one's ever given me a birthday party or a cake. I mean, she, she's never felt even the most basic love of someone saying happy birthday. Let's tell you a little party. Let's sing happy birthday and a cake. She's never experienced that. Well, they go on their way, and Tony Campola says to the, to the guy who runs the joint, he says, do these ladies come in every, every day? He said, yep, 3 o'clock on the dot. They come in. He said, and what about that lady who was sitting right next to me? Oh, that's Agnes. She, she's a nice lady. She comes in every, every day with them. Yeah, 3 o'clock. She's always doing good stuff for people. Things don't seem to work out too good for her. Tony said, well, I overheard her say tomorrow's her birthday, and she's never had a birthday party. So what you say, we throw Agnes a birthday party. And he thought about it. He said, that's the best idea. She, she's never really had anyone treat her with kindness. He says, I'll bake the cake. And then Tony, Tony went out and he bought the decorations. Tony came in about, about an hour early the next night, about 2 in the morning. He decorates it up with all this pretty stuff. Happy birthday, Agnes. And the, the owner makes a cake. And yep. And, and oh, and the people, the word got out. And he said, every prostitute in Honolulu was in this place at three in the morning. <laughs> and in walks Agnes at three in the morning. And everyone goes, happy birthday, Agnes. And she is dumbfounded. And you can just see her. Uh, she's smiling, but also kind of getting a little misty-eyed. And then... Then in comes the cake with the candles. Happy birthday to you. He, she'd never heard anyone sing, Dear Agnes. And she was Niagara Falls. Well, she pulled it together to blow out the candles. And then the people were going, Hey, Agnes, cut the cake, cut the cake. And she said, can I just look at it for a while? 
She'd never had a birthday cake. She's 30. They said, sure, Agnes, it's your birthday. It's your cake. You do what you want. She took it home. And as they're watching her walk away, she's carrying it like she's carrying the most, like the Ark of the Covenant, you know. <laughs> so she's just carried it. They made a huge difference. And then they're all sitting there in silence. And Tony, he gets up on a chair and says, if it's all right with you, I'm going to say a prayer. So he bows his head and, and he starts praying, praying for Agnes, that things turn around for her, that things go good for her, that she gets some good breaks, that she's able to turn her life into what God wants it to be and what she wants it to be, so she can hold her head high and, and shine brightly as God has designed her. And then he says the amen. <laughs> and the gruff old boy that owns that place, he goes, hey, I didn't know you were a preacher. He goes, yeah, yeah, I'm a preacher. Yeah, well, what kind of a church would hire a preacher like you? <laughs> he said, I'll tell you what kind of church. The kind of church that throws birthday parties for prostitutes at three in the morning. <laughs> and the guy says, oh, no, there's no church like that. If there were, I would join it. I would join it. You know, if we were to go out, you know, you know the old man on the street kind of thing, you tell, tell us what you think about this or that. If we were to go out here in 2022, what do you think about Christians? Uh, it, it, it wouldn't all be so good. A lot of people think we're the ones that want to ban books want to be mean to the LGBTQ community or, you know, doing weird, weird stuff. But what if instead we were the ones who, like we read in Hebrews, treat strangers like angels? What if they said, what do you think of Christians? Oh, I love Christians. They're the ones who treat everyone they meet like an angel. Well, why don't we do that? There's no reason. We can be that kind of Christian, and we can be that kind of church. I'll say a short prayer and end this sermon now. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we thank you. We thank you for the great reversal. We thank you that you love us, whether we're the, whether we're the king or queen of England, or whether we're a homeless person living under a bridge down in Kansas City. We thank you that you look at our spirit and our hearts. And we thank you that you've given us your Holy Spirit and the example of your son. Show us how to be Christians as individuals and show us how to be the kind of church you want. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, There's going to be a hymn now, uh, Bread of the World.
on the night that our Lord was betrayed, he had a meal with his disciples, his friends. And at one point he picked up the bread and he prayed over it and he broke it and said, this is my body broken for you. Eat of it often. Likewise, he lifted up the cup after blessing it and said, this cup is my blood spilled for you for the remission of sins. Eat and drink of this, and when you do, remember me. And remember this, that I will not eat or drink of this again until I do it with you in my Father's kingdom. Lord, as we take this bread, we celebrate with the world today that you are the bread of life. You feed our souls, you nourish our hearts, and you give us sustenance to run the race before us. As we break the bread, we feel the softness of your love for us. Jesus prayed that we might be one, one in spirit, one in mission, in union and communion with each other and with you. On this World Communion Sunday, give us eyes to recognize your reflection in the eyes um, of Christians everywhere. Give us a mind to accept and celebrate our differences. Give us a heart big enough to love you to love your children everywhere. We thank you for setting a banquet table with space enough for us all. Father, we ask that you, in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, bless this cup and all those who receive it. May we drink together in remembrance of the blood shed for all. We offer our praises and gratitude for all of creation, for family, friends, and strangers, for the music that moves us to tears and for your promise of something more after this life. May we be witnesses to you that we always remember Christ and hold his spirit always in our hearts. Amen.
If you're looking for a new church home, this community would be a lovely community to be a part of. And if you've yet to give your life to Christ and want to follow in his footsteps and in his precepts, he's the real one. And I invite you, we invite you to that today. And now may God watch over your steps throughout this week, protect you from all kinds of harm, and give you peace. In the name of Jesus we pray, amen. <laughs>